Socrates was one of the most prominent and, at the same time, most controversial Greek philosophers. He was a pioneering moral philosopher and his thought featured a teleological character. His views were both progressive and nonconformist, as a result of which he often ran into trouble with the ruling classes. In the end, he was put on trial, found guilty of impiety and corrupting the youth of Athens, and killed. One of the fascinating things about Socrates is the claim that he was one of the prophets of Almighty God. On the surface, it may sound mind-boggling and improbable. However, if all dimensions of Socrates' life and teachings were poured over, the claim starts coming into view as not so implausible. If nothing, it deserves an academic discussion. There are two sides to the issue, one works in favor of the probability of Socrates' prophethood, and the other works against it, but in this video, we only discuss the viewpoint of the supporters of Socrates' prophecy, if possible, in a separate video we will talk about the opponents of Socrates' prophecy. The supporters of Socrates' prophecy analyze some factors and based on these factors, they conclude that Socrates was God's prophet in Greece. Therefore, we have divided the factors that support Socrates' prophecy into four parts and we will discuss them in this video. Socrates preached proper beliefs and supreme moral values, teaching people how to internalize those and live accordingly. He led by example, becoming a symbol of righteousness and virtues he propagated, bearing resemblance to the patterns of the prophets. Socrates was convinced that no one virtue can subsist if it is not diligently and duly exercised. Before facing the panel of judges, Socrates was asked if he was preparing himself for his defense, to which he replied in the affirmative. He next said that he had spent his whole life preparing to defend himself. He emphasized that all his life he had been guiltless of wrongdoing and he considered that to be the finest preparation for a defense. Socrates was accused not only of not believing in the gods believed in by the state, but also of introducing other new divinities, which mandated and sanctioned him to do what he was doing. He was deemed misguided. One wonders if Socrates was reproaching his people for their polytheism and was trying to set things right and guide them to the path of Islamic monotheism instead and to the moral values that issued therefrom. Despite living in the shadow of the Greek pantheon of gods and goddesses, Socrates regularly referred to his god in the singular. He referred to gods in the plural only when he spoke of his people's gods often citing them as examples of falseness. In their apologies for Socrates, both Plato and Xenophon capitalized Socrates' one god. Socrates said about his god that he is by nature truthful and could not lie, he is absolutely void of falsehood, he alone has real knowledge, he grants children after which people should think out how they shall best train them. He adapted the woman's nature to the indoor and man's to the outdoor tasks and cares, he made man and woman partners in their children, he sends a storm at sea, he threatens and punishes careless fellows, where he is our teacher we all come to think alike, he gives the plants water, he has foreknowledge of the future. Without a doubt, Socrates' obedience to his one god led him to defy men and their bogus gods and goddesses, Socrates claimed that he had been given a revelation or a mandate by God described as voices of God or divine signs. Those voices, sent by heavenly dispensation, indicated to Socrates his duties, rendering his mission godlike. Through divine guidance, Socrates guided others and himself. Without asking or being asked, he used to be forewarned by signs what to do and what not to do. He was guided towards good acts and prevented from unseemly ones only through the authority of those revelations. As if Socrates was not in full control of his spiritual and moral being. He in part spoke and acted of his own accord and partly by dint of given signs and voices.